What's going on guys? This is David with Ram Tech Tips and I'm super excited today for two reasons. Two reasons. First, I have finally finished benchmarking the new AMD Raven Ridge 2200G with both 4 gigabytes of DDR4 2400 megahertz memory and 8 gigabytes of DDR4 2400 megahertz memory. Finally, and more importantly for me, the channel actually hit 50 subscribers yesterday, so I'm super excited because I just started this channel about a month ago, so it's great to see people tuning in and actually getting something out of the content that I provide. If you missed my last video where I benchmarked with only one stick of 4 gigabytes DDR4 2400 megahertz memory, don't worry because I'm actually going to be comparing the results that I got there with the results that I got during these benchmarks where I had two sticks of 4 gigabyte DDR4 2400 megahertz memory. So without further ado, let's get into the results. Alright guys, so the first game that we're going to look at is Player Unknown's Battleground. And as you can see from here, I was able to actually get the game to launch this time when I put in another stick of DDR4 RAM. Uh, however, the frame rates still weren't the greatest. So on low settings uh, is really the only settings that I, th I think you could technically call it playable. Uh, there was a lot of stuttering. You couldn't be competitive by any means. But if you're just looking to launch the game, get into it, maybe mess around a little bit to learn it. Uh, this APU is definitely going to get you up and running, but you do need a minimum of 8 gigabytes of RAM to even get it to launch. The next game on our list is Call of Duty World War II, and as you can see from the left-hand side, uh, I wasn't able to get this game to launch at all with only 4 gigabytes of system memory. However, adding an additional stick and bumping that up to 8 gigabytes, the game actually had some really good performance. So as you can see, on all three settings, we were above 40 frames per second, which definitely made it playable. Now, I only tested this title with the campaign experience, so I can't really talk about whether or not it would perform well in multiplayer. Uh, but given these benchmarks, I think on low, you could definitely expect something above 40 frames per second if you were looking to get into multiplayer. So so very impressed and very surprised with the results. Uh, so with Call of Duty World War II, uh, if you're looking to play this game, this APU can definitely do it. You just need to make sure that you've got a, at least 8 gigabytes of uh, DDR4 RAM. And again, this is a 2400 megahertz. So if you got that 3200 megahertz kit or that 3000 megahertz kit, you might even see better numbers than these. So Kingdom Come Deliverance, again, it's, it's a pretty new title. It just released, I think, last month on Steam. Uh, and it's pretty disappointing results. So we weren't able to get the game to launch on medium or high settings with our four gigabyte stick in. Uh, but we were able to get it to launch on low with an average of 13 frames per second. Bumping the memory up, we were only able to get a few more frame rates, so about eight more frames per second on the low setting, uh, and then the 17 frames per second and 14 frames per second on medium and high. Uh, the only difference here is we were able to get the game to actually launch on medium high, but again, I wouldn't actually consider it playable by any means. Now, if it's just something that you just, again, want to get into it uh, and kind of see what it's all about without really investing money into a higher end desktop yet, then it's gonna do that for you, uh, but it's not gonna be an enjoyable experience. So uh, Kingdom Come Deliverance, probably not going to work very well, at least at the 2400 megahertz RAM. Looking at our next game, Assassin's Creed Origins, uh, I had high hopes for this title because I thought that it was pretty well optimized, uh, w especially when I was playing through it, although I only got 14 frames per second on low. Uh, it was decently playable. Uh, those fr 14 frames per second were pretty smooth. Uh, however, upgrading the RAM, we only saw an increase of 6 frames per second on low and then 5 on medium. Again, nothing really to compare it to when it comes to high settings because the game wouldn't even launch with only 4 gigabytes of RAM. So again, if you're looking to play the game and just kind of start playing the game without any real interest in frame rates or quality, then this APU can definitely do it, especially if you're in you know a stopgap and you're waiting until something better comes out, maybe next gen or maybe until you're able to afford something with the recent gen, uh, then this will do it. Uh, but again, don't expect to be wowed by the quality and it's definitely going to have a lot of choppy scenes uh, when you get to play in it. So looking at the benchmarks for one of my favorite games, Destiny 2, uh, we saw some modest improvement, about double the average frames per second 
uh, on the low and the medium settings. Again, I, w I wasn't able to get the game to launch on high with only four gigabytes of RAM. But at 35 frames per second on the low setting, the game was definitely playable and I didn't feel like I was really missing out on anything. Uh, in general, cutscenes go at an average of 30 frames per second. Even. A lot of recordings are done at 24 frames per second even. Um, so it's, it's definitely playable at those frame rates. Now again, I didn't test this in multiplayer, so I can't really talk to whether or not you're gonna have a good experience if that's what you're interested in only. Uh, but if you're looking to kind of go through the campaign or just do solo content, uh, especially on the low setting and then potentially on the medium setting, you're definitely going to actually be able to play this game, which is really great to see from a chip that is this cheap, coming in at only $99. So another title that actually saw some awesome improvements with adding an additional stick of RAM was Rainbow Six Siege. So we went from an already playable 33 frames per second, again, maybe not at the competitive level, but definitely playable, to an average of 57 frames per second on the low settings, which is just incredible. So we're seeing great numbers on medium and even good numbers on high. This is the first game really that uh, I would consider actually playable on high settings. Now again, at 40 frames per second, you're probably gonna have some sort of stuttering uh, in certain moments. So if, if you're playing at a higher level, then this probably isn't gonna be enough for you. But on low, at 57 frames per second, only three off from 60, I would actually consider this game playable at a high level or a competitive level. So a very good sign from Rainbow Six Siege for this APU, and it really encouraging for some of the rest of these benchmarks that we're going to see. So Fortnite has just been getting benchmarked left and right by the TechTube community. So I'm not really gonna spend a lot of time on talking about the results here. You can see that adding an additional stick of memory upped our frame rates to over 60 frames per second on the low setting, but it really didn't do much for us in terms of the medium setting and the high setting. Again, these are all just standard settings. I didn't turn off auto aliasing or some of those other things. I literally just clicked the standard low, medium, and high, stayed away from epic and all that. Um, so I'm, I'm very surprised because I, I don't understand why the game would uh, essentially double in frames per second going from low with four gigabytes of memory to eight gigabytes of memory. Uh, and then when we look at the medium results, uh, 10 frames per second on average was the only additional advantage that we saw. So I'm not sure if something happened potentially in my benchmarking analysis, but again, I do three runs with uh, Fraps and three runs with MSI Afterburner. So that kind of rules that out. So I'd be interested to see if you or anyone else in the tech community has any experience with this game and especially at 2400 megahertz ram i know we've seen a lot with the 3000 and the 3200 megahertz and how well it runs but i think this might have something to do with the lower clock speed ram so let me know if you have any experience with this in the comments or if you have any idea of what could have happened so minecraft is another one of those games that just runs extremely well with adding an additional stick of DDR4 memory. So we can see on the low settings, we went from an average of 43 frames per second to 445 frames per second, which might just be the largest frame per second jump in the history of benchmarking. Uh, again, I do literally six uh, sets of specific benchmarks uh, for a total of 10 minutes each, so 60 minutes on a game benchmarking with two different programs. So I don't think my results are wrong, but again, there could have been something introduced into it that I'm not aware of. So again, I'd love to hear why you guys think that uh, these frame rates are so high comparatively between the two tests. Uh, at both medium and high, again, we're gonna be approaching 60 frames per second or exceeding it. So Minecraft is definitely playable on this system with 2400 megahertz RAM, but again, you will need eight gigabytes to avoid some of the choppiness. Uh, compared to my last video where Minecraft was doing a lot of stuttering, uh, if you don't know what I'm talking about, just check out my last video. It was completely unplayable because of that stuttering. I didn't have any of those issues at all when testing with the eight gigabyte set. CSGO, uh, I mean, the graphs tell the story on its own. Uh, it already went from a playable 46 frames per second on low, in my opinion, to 
an astounding 96 frames per second uh, on the low setting and even at high settings we were seeing above 60 frames per second so I know Brian over at Tech Yes City built a uh, potato <laughs> gaming PC uh, it's a great video I'll try to find the link to it and put it in the comments if you want to watch it uh, but CSGO is not a very hard game to play, but it is nice to see that adding those additional uh, or that additional stick of RAM really upped its performance, especially on this newer CPU. World of Warcraft, this is the Legion Edition, something that's really close to my heart because I have been a long time WoW player. Uh, performed extremely well. Again, we were already doing okay on the low settings at 46 frames per second. Uh, that wasn't actually tested in a super high ad area where lots of spells were going off uh, so the number could fluctuate uh, but it was tested in an extremely high population area the main city um, and 66 frames per second on low is extremely playable you're not going to have any issues especially when you're doing dungeons or raids or anything like that uh, if we want to bump the settings up to medium that's where we start to potentially see some issues at 45 frames per second uh, and then when we get to high, I, I wouldn't really recommend going anything below 30 frames per second. So I don't know that I could actually recommend WoW on high settings. But again, if you're just somebody who likes to play the game and you're just walking around, and you're just questing, uh, you're just doing banking or, or buying and selling on the auction house, then any one of these settings is going to work for you, uh, especially the low settings with both 4 gigs of RAM and 8 gigs of RAM. Overwatch, you know, that extremely popular esports title right now. Uh, again, I did consider this game playable on low settings at 50 frames per second with the 4 gigabyte model. Uh, but adding that additional memory really upped those frames per second. So you can see we're well above 60 frames, even on the high settings now with adding 8 gigabytes of RAM. So this is really going to come down to your own preference. Uh, if you want to play on those low settings, you can get away with just 4 gigabytes of RAM for now, maybe until prices come down. Uh, or if you want to play at the highest settings possible, uh, popping in that additional stick of DDR4 memory is going to up your frame rates significantly. But definitely playable regardless of which amount of RAM you actually have in the system. It is really great to see. Good job, Blizzard. So again, uh, Rocket League was a playable game on low settings. However, adding that additional stick of memory just increases your frames per second to a more playable experience. So the high setting at 43 frames per second uh, is kind of strange because it didn't actually seem like there was any sort of stuttering at all when I was playing the game. It was a very smooth experience. So. I, I would normally not recommend trying to be competitive at you know, anything below 35, but even around 40 is tough depending on the type of competition that you're playing. But again, in this test, I couldn't tell the difference between the uh, medium, the low, or the high settings. It all just ran extremely smooth, and I've just got a normal $99 monitor, nothing, nothing special, uh, and just played ex a normal three-on-three -three match. So. Again, if you're looking for just Rocket League, then either one of these uh, configurations is going to work for you. On the low settings, uh, you're going to be able to play with 4 gigabytes of RAM. But if you want to crank up those details to see all those beautiful pixels and uh, all those amazing goals that you're probably not going to make, uh, then definitely consider adding that additional 4 gigabyte stick of memory. So these next two games, uh, Team Fortress 2 and League of Legends, You'll notice that the four gigabyte sticks actually seem to run better and give better performance than adding eight gigabytes of system RAM. Again, I have no idea how these results came to be. So I'm really, really intrigued and I, I'm hoping that somebody is watching this that could shed some light onto what could have potentially impacted this performance. Uh, because again, I do 60 minutes Three, three different runs on two different programs of benchmarking, and these are the results that I came up with. No real outliers that would have skewed the data by any means, uh, but if we're looking at this, adding that additional stick of memory lowered our frame rates on Team Fortress 2 down to 50 frames per second, uh, and then lowered us down to 45 frame, frames per second on medium, 
uh, as opposed to our 51 and 64 averages with only four gigabytes of RAM. So again, if there's anyone out here who might have any ideas to what may have happened, I am all ears and I would love to go back and retest these if you have any ideas on how to improve those. And to finish off these benchmarks, we've got another weird one. So League of Legends, surprisingly, it ran really, really well with only four gigabytes of system memory. And I would recommend if you're just a League of Legends player, all you need is this APU and one stick of DDR4 memory, and you can get the cheapest memory that you can find because 2400 megahertz is going to run that game and run it extremely well. However, adding an additional stick of memory gave us worse results in terms of frame rates, and I have no idea why this happened. So adding eight gigabytes of memory to the system, we saw a decrease of 22 frames per second on low, a decrease of 12 frames per second on medium, and a decrease of four frames per second on high, which isn't a lot, but it's still a decrease, which makes no sense. Uh, I played custom games in these situations, so the benchmarking tools were pretty much the exact same. I had the same character, I took the same path, I took the same amount of time to kill towers, so I, I literally changed nothing. I added no additional programs doing these benchmarks. So if anybody has any ideas as to what could have caused this, then please leave that down in the comments below. But if you're looking to play League of Legends on this APU, then I hope that this test just confirms that you are able to do so, and you can do so at a high level with only four gigabytes of system memory. All right, guys, so that is gonna be it for this video. I definitely appreciate your patience with me. I know it took a while to get these benchmarks between the two different variants of four gigabytes and eight gigabytes of memory up. Uh, however, I do work full time. Unfortunately, YouTube is not my full time job. So I do have to work around that. So again, I appreciate all of your patience with me. My plan for my next video is going to be taking the 2400G, the new Ryzen APU uh, equivalent to the Ryzen 5 and benchmarking that the exact same way I just did this APU with both four gigabytes of system memory and eight gigabytes of system memory. If you want to see any additional games uh, benchmark, please leave that down in the comments below or send me a direct message either or, or follow me on Twitter, send me a tweet. I'd be more than happy to add any games that you're interested in seeing to this benchmark list because that's just gonna help more people out as they're looking to buy one of these APUs. As always, if you found this content helpful, go ahead and hit that like button and get subscribed to view any of my future videos on the channel. Until next time, I'll tech you later.